Okay, so today is tonight is Zos Hanukkah, the eighth night of Hanukkah, and the question which is often uh, which is discussed by many sources is what is the meaning of the name Zos Hanukkah, and it's not really dis discussed in any early sources. It's only discussed in the later sources, among which is Reb So it says that even though we don't find any sources, the sources the name Zos Hanukkah for the eighth day of Hanukkah, nevertheless. So it's it is something which people kind of do say and do use, so therefore the misdomen has some source and some meaning for it. So um, we're going to try going to try and understand it. Try to turn on the chat here. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, so the uh, we're going to try and explore it through the Tzadik and a little bit digress from his viewpoint as well. The Tzadik begins with recording a Medrash Tanchuma. The Medrash Tanchuma is in Parshas Nasso, and guess what? By Yom Hashmini, by Yom Hashmini, the Nasi will be named Hashem. Yom Deinu Rabenu. This is the way Tanchuma usually starts. Because sometimes it's called Medrash Yom Deinu because it's all about what Rabbi Tanchuma was asked to teach his Talmidim. Nasi Ner Chanukah shows Sir Ba Hashem and Biyom Arisho. If you have Ner Chanukah with which in which you left oil from the first day, Ma'u Lavik Ba Ba Sheni, can you light it in this on the second day? So it says yes, right? You can learn the first day, you can use the second day, and so on and so forth. But if it was, there was left over on the eighth day, also on the door so you have to make for it a bonfire in itself. Lama, why? Came with Jukso Mitzvah since it was designated for the Mitzvah, it becomes Mukta, and you can't use it for any other purpose. Also, Shtamish, remember. Loyal Maradam, the person should not say, I should not, I'm not going to fulfill the mitzvah of the elders. It's not the right so. Hashem said, You're not permitted to do that. Anything they decree upon you, you fulfill it. says, Do based on the Torah that they command you, that direct you. Lama, why? Because I, Kodesh Baruch Hu, also agreed to what Chazal to, to tell you to do. It says, the Pasuk in Eov, the things are over, you decree and state, and will rise for you, will be sustained for you. This is true. Because Yaakov at the time he gave the bracha to Menashe and Ephraim, also a katan kodem lagodo. He put Ephraim before Menashe. The key of Hakadosh Baruch Hu Gzeirah said Hashem fulfilled this Gzeirah. Amos, I went. The Korbanos had a scene, and the Korbanos had a scene. She cried, "Shevet Ephraim Tchila," where Shevet Ephraim sacrificed before Shevet Menashe. Shevet Ephraim sacrificed on Yom uh, uh, on the uh, uh, earlier. I think it was the seventh day. Um, was, yeah, on the seventh day, Yom Hashmi, and Shem Yom Hashmi Nasiv Ephraim, a Chag of Menashe, the Menashe. So, a fascinating thing, the first Medrash Tanchor, which I'm sorry to quote, is that this, has this day, Yom HaShmini, taught us that Hashem fulfills the decrees of this Canaan. Because Yaakov decreed Ephraim before Menashe, here Hashem confirmed that, and put Ephraim on the seventh day, Menashe on the eighth day, so by, via the seventh eighth day, this concept of Hashem listens to the mitzvahs Kenim was fulfilled. The next, the next, Reb Tanchuma the Reb Tzadik doesn't quote, doesn't explicitly read the Hanukkah, but it's interesting. On the eighth day, Nosi Bnei Menashe, I'm Rabbi Avi and Alevi Rabbi, a Yisim Mevarech Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Yosef blessed Hakadosh Baruch Hu. V'adon Ora Asum Lachish Refiv and his master Paro saw him. Whispering, "Where am I alone?" Paro said, "My time. What are you saying?" When we shivo, so he responded for him, and he said, "Ani mevarech la'kurish baruchu." Give me a bracha to Hashem. Ani mevarech shiroso. Paro says, "I want to see him." Amar Yosef said, "Ari chamoshu echad mikamo shamoshim shalom." The son, which is one of his servants, she ena to yochel abipo. You cannot look at it. Kvod Allah has come, come. How much more so the honor of Hashem? Actually, it's not Paro, it's Potiphar. Sorry, from the Pasch which is brought down. 
My wife, I will reveal myself to him. They demonstrate that's not true. Shema, Vayar Adonov ki Hashem imo. His master saw that Hashem was with him. So he saw some sort of his gallus, some sort of revelation. What is what is that which says Hashem is the king of honor, glory, or Shuholi covered the array of? He distributes his covered to his those who fear of him, are in fear of fear of him. Melch Bazardam, a human king, English Tamshim Sharvito, you can't use his scepter. Moshe of Aaron, not with Sharvito, Moshe and Aaron used his scepter. And my cat Moshe's Matelo, Kimbi Odo. Moshe took the, the, the staff of Hashem in his hand. And it goes on to give several other examples of a human king who can't sit on his throne, a Shlomo sat on Kis Hashem, a human king who can't ride his horse, a Yo rode on Hashem's horse and chariot, and so on and so forth. And it goes on um, to, uh, in a considerable detail. Now, that, this Medrash, come in juxtaposition to the previous Medrash, is something which I want to dwell on in a few moments. But first, this I, uh, this week I looked up uh, what were Epicurus, Epicurus's philosophies. We we should assume, I think, legitimately that philosophies represented by Epicurus, who was who predated the Hashemarayim by 150 years or so, was the were the basis of Greek philosophy, which were in uh, uh, opposition to Judaism. Uh, especially because, subsequently as well, we call a person who denies the tenets of Judaism an Epicurus, based on Epicurus. So, uh, Epicurus had three fundamental beliefs, and um, this is both in Wikipedia and the Encyclopedia Judaica, the old edition. The three fundamental beliefs of salient philosophies of Epicurus were one, that good is defined as pleasure and bad is defined as pain. That which gives pleasure is good and that which gives pain is bad, and that is the sole definition of good and the sole definition of bad. Two, the neshama does not last after a person's death. Now, I didn't clarify this sufficiently to see if he held not like Plato altogether, that there is no uh, eternity in the neshama or that there is no din v'cheshbon, but certainly there is no din v'cheshbon. There's no judgment. There's no final reckoning. There's nothing that who takes place after death to ascertain whether you live your life pro appropriately and therefore should be rewarded or punished. Finally, he believed that there are gods, but the realm of the gods is completely separate from the realm of men, and that there is no uh, connection between the world of gods and the world of men. He, he, nevertheless, he was for, pro for religious services. Religious services make people feel good. They're pleasurable. But not because they achieve anything. They don't achieve anything. Now, the, what I want to focus upon is this last idea. Of course, all of these three ideas are inimical to Judaism. They're antithetical to what we believe. But, but the last one is in, uh, the one which is most important to us. It's saying that the realm of the gods and the realm of men has no, have no affinity to each other is the antithesis of our concept of creation. Uh, in, a in a specific way, based on the Nefesh Haim, that we believe that the world was created so that we should be given the capacity to control the world and to be able to enhance its Kedusha or de uh, uh, diminish its Kedusha, as the case may be, based on Torah Mitzvahs. This is something which irked the Greeks no end. And therefore, one of their primary uh, Takonos, which they tried to impose, and the uh, decrees they tried to impose on the Jews was, Kisul Lachem al Ashor, write for yourselves on the horn of an ox, Elachem Chelak Belokeso, you have no portion in the Lord of Israel. Now, it's a funny thing, Elachem Chelak Belokeso, in the God of Israel, in the Lord of Israel, why not Belokim? Why not Bavaya? So the, a the answer is, I think, obvious, based on what we're saying, which is, when we say chelik, like the second Tanchuma says, we know that where there's actually in the bracha, which we make when we see a Jewish chacham, a Jewish sage, and we see a, 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 a chacham, a chacham, and we see a non-Jewish or 
secular sage, a chacham a chachma is boss of Adam. A boss of is a bracha to be made, but the bracha for a chacham, mi chachma Yisrael, is a shecholach mi chachma so yirea. He d- distributed from his chachma to those who fear him, whereas the bracha for a, um, for a, um, for for uh, for non-Jewish sages, Asher Nosan Michach Masoliyev. He gave his wisdom. To, uh, the boss of them. He gave his wisdom to human beings. What's the chin Cholak in Nosan? And the seed of Matona means a gift which is given, and then it remains the person who receives it, and it's t- t- away taken away for the person who gave it. It's a clean break. Chelak means. We both have a part. I have a part, and you have a part, and that's both both partner together. We divide things up, so to speak, and that's what the Medrash is stressing here. When I mention this, Hashem is cholik mi chachmas liyareof. He says the the Medrash say about the scepter, which which is the scepter of Hashem, the throne which is the throne of Hashem. What does that mean? It means that there was divinity in the throne. There was divinity in the in the scepter in the in the staff given to Moshe Rabbeinu. There were divine powers and divine influence in that which was given to Bas of Adam, given to human beings. That was what irked the uh, uh, Greeks. So you can have a god. And the truth is, if they wrote Enoch and Chelak Ba'avaya, it wouldn't be so. Uh, that that would not be, be uh, resolve the Greeks' issue. We know the Shem Havaya represents not the, so much the relationship, because not Mida connected Mida, it's not Mida Sadin. It's that which comes from Mida Sachesed above and beyond, and represents usually revealed miracles above and beyond any merit on our part. Whereas Elohim represents the, uh, the ongoing give and take between our Mitzvah and Averos and the, uh, the flow which comes from Shemaim. So therefore, what the Yavanim Particularly resented is Chelak Beloke Yisrael. By the way, why on Karen Shore? Why on the uh, on the uh, horn of an ox? So I believe it has to do with the Gemara of Baba Kama. That's from the Ches. This is really a parenthetical remark. But the Gemara of Baba Kama, Lama Ches says that there were a couple Roman representatives who came to Am Yisrael to learn the Torah, and they learned the whole Torah, and they said everything you say in Torah is good for, makes sense to us, and is as fair and just. Except for this halacha that Shorsho Yisrael Shenaga Shorsho Akum that if the ox of a Jew uh, uh, gores the ox of a non-Jew, so then the the, the Jew doesn't have to pay. So I, uh, Chazal don't tell us the reason there, the metaphysical, the theological reason, but there is an idea there which is that it's because our oxen belong to a nation which is above and beyond, which is has this unique degree of Kedusha, whatever it is. So therefore, we don't, we don't have a Chiv. We have a Chiv, we'll be damaged directly, but not our oxen. So I think that that's the illusion, but that's really a parenthetical remark. What's, what's relevant to us is, again, the idea of Enochem Chelek Be'el Keiso. And that idea is what underlies the first matter of Shtan Chuma. First matter of Shtan Chuma is telling us that what does this eight day represent to us? It represents the power to, to have Chach Yisrael have in order to change things in the Bria, in order to change the Ratzon Hashem, to put Menashe before Ephraim. And the Mitzvah's Kanim, therefore, with, uh, is, the, is mentioned here to tell us that we're supposed, we're supposed to listen to this Kanim in everything they say as if it's a Zoraisa. We say Asher Kedushan Mitzvahs of Etzivon on the Mitzvahs Kenim, and the Mitzvah comes to the Chazal because it has that authority. It's vested by Hashem with that authority, and uh, this uh, relates, of course, to the Eight of Hanukkah specifically because the Menashe and Ephraim aspect to it. But Absalom says, in general, relates to Hanukkah and, and also to Purim to a large extent, but more so to Hanukkah. I'll we'll explain why in a minute. And I want to digress again to uh, 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 the question which Absalom doesn't discuss, which is so I'm going to parallel question, which is Hanukkah and Purim have a mitzvah pir Manes to publicize the miracle. We don't have this mitzvah pir Manes on any other yontif. Only Hanukkah and Purim. And that, as a matter of fact, this mitzvah pir Manes seems to go to publicize the miracle, seems to fly in the face of one of the sacred values of Judaism. 
We have three of the sacred values in Judaism. We're expressed by the prophet, Asos Mishpat, doing justice, Avas Chesed, to love kindness, Vatsnei Alechazim Okecha, to go Bitsnius before Akinar Boyas Hashem. To do it in humility and modesty and in secrecy if possible. So, and Chazal say, you know, the say, Enochu Yofim in Tsnius, there's nothing better than Tsnius because Tsnius, the first Luchos which were given, with tremendous colors of broken, they were not, they, they were broken, and the second ones which were given, but Tsnius, they were the ones which Christ kept permanently. So, why kind of good are different? Why don't they fall into that category of Atsnei Aleches, which uh, underlies, which, which, which will, the, the mode of Atsnei Aleches, with which we're supposed to approach normally all other aspects of our lives. So, again, I think the answer is along these lines. What, it's not a mitzvah of fire statement that Kodesh Baruch Hu gives to us. So to speak, what the Mukulam call Isarusa del Elo, which comes from our high down to us. That's nothing, no, nothing to publicize. There's nothing to, to teach through that. Just go do the mitzvah. Do it. But say a bit But when we have it, it comes to be Sarusa de la from below on high, through the, through Chazal, and through our impact on the Bria, ooh, that's a mitzvah of Farsi. It's a mitzvah to let people know that we do have a chelik belo Israel, And we do have this capacity, you know, the Balatania, called the chelik belo mamish. We do have this divinity to be able to impact on creation and to be able to change the way things are, even to the extent of making yantav. You know, the Chazanish, after the Second World War, when they wanted to start a, a make a commemorative uh, day, for memory of the Holocaust, so he was opposed to it because we don't have no longer in our day the capacity to tamper with the calendar. By the way, one of the things the Greek were against was Rosh Chodesh, which is our capacity to ta to tamper with the calendar here below. So that we don't no longer have the capacity. We cannot determine and give a character to a day which makes it different than any other day, whether it's a good day or a bad day. So therefore, he was opposed to the Holocaust Memorial Day. But at the time of Chazal, they still had that power. And it says, uh, the, uh, the, we uh, show the Chrenim, uh, the Svasemes, and I think, or the Iovians down say that, uh, the, it says, the Chanukah, the Shona Cheretz Kavon Bahalavoga. The next year they, they made these days of Chanukah days of praise and thanks. Why well, next year? Because they sensed, when the next year came around, that the same Hashpa, the same, Influence which existed the year before existed in these days now, a year later. So therefore, they were they were able to make that into Yotif. Uh, some said something similar, but perhaps it works the other way as well, which is that they're able to put that hashpa into the calendar. Now, by Purim, it's not as big a chiyus as Rambam, because by Purim there were still Nevi'im among them. And, you know, Nevi'im have special powers; they can sense that divinity, perhaps even instill that divinity. But the, by Hanukkah, there were no more Nevi'im. Hanukkah, there were only Chachamim. And the power to make a day, in which you say, Hashem Gisham Mitzvah, Mitzim Banu, the power to give a day a special character and a special uh, nature, that is something which is a remarkable thing. That's the, as a matter of fact, there's a Shita that the bracha to make on the nearest Hanukkah, we don't possibly, of course, was on Mitzvah Zekenim. To make the bracha, Hashem Gisham Mitzvah, Mitzim Banu, Mitzvah Zekenim. That you command us to keep the mitzvah of the elders. So this power is really an intrinsic part of the celebration of Hanukkah. I got a chat you know here that says, a Mechamis one says they decided to make Hanukkah, are they right at the moment? So they probably only first celebrate the next year. year. Yeah, they couldn't, I, I, I'm not sure whether you have to come out to that concept of Lashon HaKeres and that deal in order to the same thing. It could, could be that uh, it's the deal is not necessarily true, but in any event, the Chachamim instituted these days and made them a permanent Takana, whether that year or the next year, and that was that, that was the remarkable thing of Hanukkah. So Zos Hanukkah um, is it comes to teach us this less this lesson of mitzvahs kenim and linking by linking it to the original mitzvahs kenim, which changed the Bria, which was putting a frame before Menashe, and the Torah says also. This is related to the Hanukkah and Mishkan as well, because the Mishkan, unlike the Beis Hamikdash, the Beis Hamikdash 
was in a specific spot designated by Kodesh Baruch Hu from the six days of creation where the Eminah should see the foundation stone was laid. So that, that Kedusha was put there by a Kodesh Baruch Hu. And the fact that Abraham Avinu brought the Koran of Gitzah there, Yavad said that, it was already invested with that Kedusha. But the Mishkan, wherever they kept, they made that place a Mishkan, and they made that place a place of Kedusha, and through Abel Yisrael's actions of putting the Mishkan there. Now, of course, you could say, Amur Anon, Amur Eish told them where to put it, but it was they who put it down in this spot, and not four Amos over, and not five Amos that way, and anybody who walked in who was not a Kohen, not appropriate, would be killed in that spot. Why? Because we also have this power of instilling Kedusha in Mokom, in Zman and in Mokom. Certainly in Nefesh, also in people, but in the time space continuum. So the um, so that, that both of these uh, aspects of Hanukkah and Mishkan, which we're celebrating, also we said that the Mishkan was completed on the twenty fifth day of Kislev, but it was not put up until it was late until Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Give Nisan that honor. That's when the scene sacrificed. But Hanukkah comes to remind us of the uh, uh, the the. the uh, uh, it's sort of like the Tikkun for the consolation prize for the which is a good one for the eight days beginning with uh, with Chavhei uh, Kitve and this idea is of, of the Kedusha Samishkon is therefore stressed as the laning for these days and ending with Zos Hanukkah Zos Hanukkah to tell us that this is the message of Hanukkah the message of Hanukkah is the idea of mitzvah zikhani. And um, by the way, uh, although Ron objected to this, that's, uh, they say that that's why it says in Mo's sort of, B'nai vina yimei shmona kom shira noni. B'nai vina, the people, the men, people understanding, they saw and actually they understood. That's only one interpretation of the Mo's sort of. But next they understood that this was a special time, so they made this a day of shira noni. The other, inter the other interpretations, for example, saying that there would need to be B'nai Vina in order to make Mesh Mona, because they have to figure out an answer to the base race of Skasha. Why it's not seven days, why it's eight days. So therefore we need to have a special understanding in order to make a Dafka eight days and not seven days. But in any event, B'nai Vina in Mesh Mona was, was that Bina is the eighth Mida, counting from Kesser down. Or Chachman, very good does or not. So the eighth day is the day of Bina. And the day of the Chazal are called here B'nai Bina because they have that power of being misplaining, of looking at things and seeing how things are supposed to be and making those things into fruition. That's what Chazal did. That's what we're supposed to do in our capacity, which is limited, to be able to fulfill the same thing. It's interesting that the Shemeshem Yeshua brings out from the Mezritcher Magid that the word Zos is Zayin, the seven days of creation, and Aleph to Tov, the 22 letters of the alphabet. So it represents the totality of creation in nature and in the letters which underlie nature. See, Rufus, the letters which underlie the creation. And Zos Hanukkah means take all of nature and bring it into the eight. Connected to the supernatural, so this would be, the day means to take that which is natural, a mundane day, and make it into something supernatural, make it something beyond. He also says a different idea of the Shem Bishmuel, which is that the eighth day is like Shmini Atzeres, and just like Shmini Atzeres is meant to bring the entire Hashpa of the days of Tishrei into the rest of the year to be the bridge between Sukkot and Chol, which is in Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and Chol. So the eighth day of Hanukkah also has that idea of being the bridge between the the Hanukkah and the mir the seventh day miracle. According to the Rebbe says the Kasha is answered because the eighth day is the Tachon day. It's made to be like the Shmini Atzeres, which everything is brought together in order to bring make the uh, the um, in order to make the, the influence the rest of the year. And it could be, though he doesn't mention this as far as I know, 
That's at least when I looked inside it, as I mentioned, could be that that is alluded to in what the first marriage time woman says that on the end, you can write the well, from the first day and the second day, the second day and the third day, and so on and so forth. But that which is left on the eighth day, Osalom Adur Bifniatzma. You don't carry it over, but you make a bonfire out of it. Now, whether you made the bonfire on the eighth day or the ninth day, so I don't think it makes a difference, but the idea of the bonfire is take all the fire of Hanukkah and bring it together and then use it for the rest of the year. And the bonfire of Hanukkah, whatever tremendous light there is of Hanukkah, and one could say many things of Hanukkah in general, but it all comes down to making that bridge, making from the ore of Hanukkah, from the individual lights, a medura, which is going to last um, for the rest of the year. Ron's right here that he burns the wicks with the chametz. I'm not so sure that that's, that's okay because, I don't know, it could be unless somebody says it, because since they're hooked to, to the mitzvah of Hanukkah, I'm not sure you can use them, well, if you're not using them as fuel, but as, that would be okay, but you can use them as fuel to burn the chametz because uh, they may not they're, they're be using them. They're, we're, we're mucher for the use on Hanukkah. By the way, that's also a remarkable thing about Hanukkah, which is that there be a constant of mukta for the mitzvah's chachamim of Hanukkah. So all of these things play into the special nature of Hanukkah. There's one other idea about those Hanukkah I wanted to share, which is that, oh, just a second, I have to find it. Um, the, um, yeah, there's a saying called Imei Noam, one of the early Hasidim. And he says, why is it called? He has many, many explanations uh, on why the last day of Hanukkah is called Zos Hanukkah. So one of the explanations which he gives of the many is, uh, why is it called Zos Hanukkah? Because it's the Terutz and the Kashmir Chazal, my Hanukkah. It's because the Gemara is the Bible, he asks, he asks, my Hanukkah. So we say, oh, Zos Hanukkah. Meaning that the last day we have the, the Terutz. So he gives a, a, a more, a little bit more of a mystical explanation as to why it's the Teretz. We're having to do with Bina being the eighth Svira and uh, the, the Hanukkah being Bina. But it could be that this also is, and, and uh, was what we said, understanding. What's Zos Hanukkah? My Hanukkah, how is there Yom Tifter Abonon? Zos Hanukkah, no! We learn from the eighth day of Hanukkah, from the Ephraim being on seventh day, and Menashe being on the eighth day. That there is this concept of Hanukkah, which is legitimate based on Chazal's capacity to make such a thing. So, Amen, this is the message which was against Apicorsus. Apicorsus is, is primarily, uh, again, three things the pleasure, pain, pain equaling good and, good and bad, but, uh, and that's we're not really addressing tonight so much. But the second and third thing are, the, are connected. That there's no eventual judgment and there, there's no relationship between God and man, or gods and man. Why? Because the, there, if there is no God man relationship, there is no eventual judgment. And there's no eventual judgment because there is no anticipation of man emulating God or being like God in any way, shape, or form. They're two completely separate realms. Acher's apicursus, you know, Acher, it says that. Well, his Abikarsus was connected to the fact that he, he saw by whatever that means, the Malach sitting down in the presence of Hashem, that there was no de lace demon, lace dying. He didn't deny that there is a God. There is a God, but he doesn't judge. That's why he was, that, that's why he was able to read it and says that, well, Pasak Zemer Yevani Me Pif. He was always singing Greek songs. Why Greek songs? Because this is the Greek idea. There is no relation between God and man, and therefore man can do as he pleases, and there is no cheshman. It's not reckoned. Perhaps even there is no neshama after death, but there's certainly no reckoning. So, uh, so I may run ass here. So I'll be choruses today who deny all are super apicorses. Yes, they're even greater. Yes, the concept of a concept of uh, apicorus being an atheist is even greater than uh, sense denial. It's probably more foolish. Uh, because uh, Epicureanism makes sense on some level, but uh, atheism 
doesn't make the, the, really as much sense as Epicureanism. But in any event, that's where the original term comes from, Epicursus, and, and that's where what Hanukkah is the antithesis of, that there is this Hegel, okay, so that it's learned from Zos Hanukkah, from Menashe, being given that, uh, the, the uh, fine being placed before Menashe, and uh, this puts the responsibility upon us, as Nefesh Chaim says, to make sure with our Chelek of LLK Yisrael to be able to always use the Bria the right way with Torah Mitzvahs and to elevate the Bria and not to use the Bria the wrong way by doing Rechman of Tzana Beiris and bringing the Bria down. It also gives us the idea, uh, reinforces the idea of the Kedusha of Chazal. How uh, Chazal had this capacity to manipulate the, the heaven and earth would continue them in very profound ways, which would legitimate the the Yont of Hanukkah and gives us the perspective of the ultimate purpose of the Bria, which is, like Hashem says in Bracious, that we should conquer the earth. Not that we should conquer the earth with weaponry, but we should conquer earth means we should control us, the Bria. When Art uh, Nasani Adam means that He's gave gave it to us in order to uplift it by doing the right thing with it and to be able to follow our Zikanim in knowing and fulfilling that purpose. So um, with the message of Hanukkah, we have to be able to fight. Everybody has a Shemit Shalapi Karsus within us. It's not just a person, it's also a an inclination. So we should try and use this inclination to fight whatever Apikarsus we have within ourselves. And uh, and a Freilchen and a Lichtigen, so it's Hanukkah. We'll stop here for tonight.